Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another live webinar here on iThemes Training. My name is Nathan Ingram. I am the host at iThemes Training, and today I'm joined by my friend and Google Analytics expert, David Zimmerman. Welcome back to iThemes Training, David. How are you? I'm well. How are you today? I am doing well, other than I just remembered as soon as I hit record that I forgot to start the transcript. So we'll start that in just a minute, folks, as soon as we get through this preliminary information. We'll get that transcript going for anybody that would appreciate that. Uh, so, David, we have a lot to talk about. The, the yeah. end of universal analytics is nigh. Um, what are we going to talk about today in this whole process of transitioning to Google Analytics 4? We're going to talk primarily about the idea that Google is forcing us to do some automated transitions and what we should do about that to prepare. Yeah, so if you, like me, have gotten 8 million emails uh, from Google saying, hey, we're going to transition your properties over to GA4, that's, that's our big focus today is this first step in the process. Uh, I'm, I was just talking to David uh, pre-show about uh, coming back and doing some additional Google Analytics training for us on GA4. And so we're, we're going to get that in the works and planning. But today is especially, you know, what we need to do right now with, you know, in view of this upcoming change to uh, Google Analytics 4 and sunsetting of Universal Analytics. Uh, so just a couple of notes uh, as we're getting started here. If you're just joining us, welcome. A lot of folks just popping in. I'm going to drop the link bundle in the chat. That will have today's slides. If you want to follow along with David on the screen, you'll have that. As well as the link to the replay will be done in about an hour after we wrap up. We'll have the video replay that you can rewatch if there's anything you want to go back and review or share that out with anybody. It's a public link, and uh, we would encourage you to share this with others because it will definitely be uh, useful information. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that we'll have that ready about an hour after. Now, David, there's also a link here in the link bundle to Curious Ants. Tell us just a little bit about Curious Ants and what's involved in that. Yeah, so Curious Ants is my attempt to help you do SEO. So uh, SEO is hard. It's hard to keep up all the changes going on, keep everything straight with all the rumors. So Curious Ants is one place where you can go to have not only learn SEO, but actually do it while you're learning it, because I give you all the processes that I use on my SEO clients. And lo and behold, we talk once a week on the problems that you're facing. So it's kind of a, a place to go to help you either provide SEO as a service for your clients or do SEO for your own website. Yeah. Uh, and so for those of you that haven't met David before, David is the founder of Reliable Acorn, a you know, David is one of these high dollar sought after SEO experts that works with a handful of chosen clients and does a really good job for them. And what he's done with Curious Ants is put his SEO game plan together uh, for you to be able to, you know, basically follow the way he does SEO. And it's quite helpful. Uh, so, David, with that, I'm going to be quiet and let you start talking about this, because this is a very important subject as we're getting ready for GA4 to come on the scene. So yeah. uh, I'll disappear. And folks, in the meantime, if you have questions, please use the Q&A button in Zoom. And it's helpful <clears> to <throat> just go ahead and pop that window open and have it there because as others ask questions, you'll see that. And you can uh, press the thumbs up button and upvote those questions. Uh, and we'll take those questions at the end today in the order of their upvotes. Uh, and so, yes, I see a note about the transcript in the chat. I failed to do that as we got started. And I'll be doing that just as soon as I disappear here. So with that, David, I'll turn it over to you. Let's talk about this transition plan. Well, I will fill time with meaningless banter until Nathan can get the transcript running. But hi, I'm David Zimmerman. It's so nice that you could join us today. We're going to be talking about something that we've been putting off for, well, a couple of years, which is the transition to GA4. Um, at the end of this webinar, I hope that you'll have a couple things in your pocket. Number one, more confidence that GA4 is actually a good thing. And also GA4 uh, is not as scary as it seems. Uh, but two, I wanna give you some tips on making that transition more smooth. Um, I definitely wanna make sure we have time at the end to uh, answer some questions you might have, whether about the transition process or even GA4. Uh, I invite you to go back to the webinar and iThemes if you want uh, the boot camp we did on GA4 last year. Uh, there's going to be a lot to catch up there too. And at the end, I'm going to talk to you about a study group I'm sponsoring with uh, uh, going through GA4 together if you want to participate in that. So let's get started because here we are. We're in this dilemma right now. 
And the first of the dilemma is we, we like Google Analytics the old way. Well, that is very common. Uh, you know, it, I do too. The problem is it's going away. As of July, it will stop tracking. As of December, we will no longer have access to any of the data in UA. So you can say all you want to, you liked UA better than GA4, but we got to do something about it. Um, so sorry, <laughs> but we got to move on. This next thing that we have is a dilemma, and I, I, I hear this all the time, is, is the, but Google Analytics is illegal thing. Uh, you know, I'm no lawyer to the disappointment of my mother, but I, I just when people start staying that threat, I, I want you to ask yourself what financial interest did they have in promoting this idea? Um, sometimes I've seen a lot of fear mongering around Google Analytics and uh, just ask yourself, do they have an, a, 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 something financial of interest of theirs to promote the idea that analytics is illegal? Uh, if you live in the European Union and market to an audience in the European Union, you might need to consider some options, but uh, the US State Department is actively working on this. Google has massive financial interest to make sure that it is not illegal in Europe. And so, just be careful about throwing out the baby with the bathwater because someone warned you of something like this. And the other dilemma we all kind of face is just the idea that GA4 is very confusing. Um, it is. It is very confusing. And my bullet point's not showing up there. But GA4 is confusing. It is frustrating. However, GA4 is a superior product. Um, for lots of reasons. Um, here's kind of a table I kind of created that compares the different uh, different versions of analytics. Universal analytics is old analytics, what we, most of you are probably using now. Uh, GA4 or Google Analytics 4 is what we will have to use starting in July. Uh, there are significant differences, but I think as you understand these differences, you can start to see why this is a better product. Uh, Universal Analytics is built around page views. That's if you're using Google Analytics for a long time, that's what you're used to. Google, uh, Google Analytics 4, however, is built around events. So what ends up happening is Google Analytics 4 gives us a lot better data on our website. Uh, for instance, we used to do fancy tracking of, hey, did anybody scroll down the page? And we'd set up different events with JavaScript and do all kinds of fancy stuff to see, oh, does anybody scroll down the page on our website? Well, that is actually tracked by default in Google Analytics 4 because it's tracking the event of the scroll. It's tracking when you click on something. Uh, let's say you click on a button, you click on a link. It's already keeping track of that. You don't have to set up separate Google Analytics JavaScript codes and hacking websites to do all this stuff. It's doing it automatically out of the box. That is somewhat why the numbers don't line up. We're tracking two different things, a page view or an event. Now, a page view is an event, so we can line up these numbers correctly, but we just got to understand that they're tracking two different things. Uh, we all know, or uh, if you have a larger running website, that universal analytics begins to start sampling data. Um, it can be annoying with a larger website. Uh, Google Analytics will do that too, but Google Analytics is also using machine learning. Um, the machine learning is, I, I kind of was a little uncomfortable with this idea that the data I'm getting in, universal, in Google Analytics 4 is machine learned. It's not necessarily exactly what you're seeing. It's giving some machine learning and then maybe adding some information in there. Uh, but what's really good about this is as privacy becomes more important, the machine learning algorithm is able to conject. You know, it wasn't able to track that because of a privacy thing, but it can conject into our data to give us more insight. Uh, that would normally make me very uncomfortable, but Google is doing it very conservatively and promises with smaller websites where the numbers 
are more could potentially be bigger impact if they added more less or less uh, it's not going to affect it very much they're being very conservative with it uh, now i really hope you're not reporting on bounce rates because that's a pretty stupid metric but if you really have to report on bounce rate the bounce rate in google analytics 4 is actually relatively accurate <laughs> bounce rate in uh, universal is pretty stupid uh, basically if you visited a page and you did nothing but back out Google Analytic, Universal Analytics would call that a bounce. But what we don't know is did someone call a phone number on that page? If they visited a page, called a phone number and left, Universal Analytics would call it an unsuccessful visit, a bounce. However, if they clicked the call on, Univer on Google Analytics 4, we, that would be a very successful visit. And because it's tracking clicks, it would know someone needed to click to call on that page and it's no longer a bounce. So because of these engagement activities, we have a better source of data with GA4, uh, but bounce rate's a pretty stupid metric anyway. Um, you know, Universal Analytics, everybody loves all these built-in reports. GA4 is bare minimum by design because they're trying to do is, I don't know if you've ever had this problem, but you, you introduce Google Analytics to a client and they just, just get absorbed in this data, most of which doesn't really even matter to them, but they get obsessed with it because it's there. GA4 kind of gets away from that problem by not overwhelming people with too much data. Um, a lot of the data in universal analytics, I'd argue, doesn't apply to every client. And so when certain clients, let's say a lead generation client, is trying to look at the number of pages viewed, it's really not a very valuable metric for them unless they're like selling ads. If you're the New York Times and you're selling ads, you need to know how many pages are viewed in a session. If you're a lead gen service, pages viewed in the session actually might be a bad thing. Maybe people aren't finding what they need to and they're frustrated. But the point is, I'm trying to say, is that Google Analytics 4 doesn't provide these confusing reports, but they allow you to create all kinds of reports. Uh, with the explore feature, you can do all kinds of different things. So if you need it, you can create it, but they don't volunteer it off the bat. Uh, custom reports and dashboards are being replaced by Looker Studio. I know Looker Studio can be a challenge to some, um, but it's really a great product and you can integrate all kinds of great data together. So it's worth your time to invest. I'd suggest that that's the future. So take some time and, and learn that. You can't do annotations. I love annotations in my Google Analytics. Can't do that in GA4 yet, but perhaps later. Um, you have to do fancy event tracking in Universal Analytics with JavaScript. All happens by default in GA4. Uh, goals are tracked a little different. That might explain some differences in data uh, with a goal that you set up in Universal Analytics. Uh, it's only counted for each session of a user. So if someone on one visit to your website submits a goal twice, it's counted once in universal. In GA4, every time the goal is completed, it is counted. So even if in the same session. <clears throat> but the biggest reason, the biggest difference in reporting numbers is how Google attributes your conversions. Universal Analytics by default is last non-direct click. That is really not very great way to measure success of a marketing campaign. Uh, you know, someone may find you from organic search, sign up for your email list after your email list, follow you on Facebook, and then finally make a purchase. So where do we attribute the sale? In universal analytics, that would be attributed to Facebook, to social, because that's the last non-direct click. Data-driven uh, attribution allows Google to say, you know what, the first source and the third source both helped contribute and give a little bit of attribution value to those other sources. So if you're doing different marketing channels that have had poor performance, you might start to see some things uh, performing better. In fact, you might even see decimals reported in terms of conversions. That's the data driven. Anyway, this is a comparison of what we're doing. This is a comparison of what GA4 has to offer. I think it's a better solution. Um, I think you'll eventually <laughs> get over the learning curve and be really grateful. But primarily what I want to talk about today is something my dad, I mean, I mean, Google said, 
that if you don't do it, I'll do it for you. Uh, that's kind of where we are right now. Uh, you and your clients, they're getting these notifications in Google Analytics. Hey, you better do it or we're going to do it for you. And uh, I want to you to leave with an idea that you don't let want Google to do it for you. So I would like you to learn how to do it yourself. So we're going to talk about that today. So there are several reasons why you should transition manually to GA4 and not let Google's automated system do it. The first reason is that, oh man, this is not showing up. Uh, older Google Analytics 4 auto migration simply didn't work. Um, I don't know if you started a long time ago with GA4. I, when I did this about a year ago, I tried to import, use their little wizard to import my goals into conversions. Didn't even work. Uh, in the past, Google has really screwed up these auto migration systems. And so I've lost confidence in the auto migration systems to actually auto migrate. Um, and so that's why I think it's better for you to do it manually. Um, there we go. Uh, if you do it manually, you get to control what you change rather than what, let Google guess. Now, this is probably more important if you have a very complicated in, install of Google Analytics. Um, the automated system might not read between the lines very well. They might imply or think you're trying to do something else and you're not. So if you have a complicated install of Google Analytics, it's probably just worth you doing it yourself. Just do it manually. Um, here we go. The, uh, the best reason why you should probably do this migration from Universal to GA4 manually is just frankly, let's be honest, your Google Analytics install is a little crazy. It's a little messed up. Uh, there might be filters in there that you don't even use anymore. There might be goals or conversions that aren't even accurate or tracking anymore. Like this is your opportunity to clean it up, especially like your users. You know, you, this, this is maybe the first time you've worked with this, you know, you, the clients not worked with, with, uh, worked with other people besides you. They might still have access to their Google Analytics account. Like they have no business being in there Now's your chance to lock them out. Lock out old employees who have no business accessing this information. Do an inventory to make sure that everyone who needs it gets it and the owners own it. Like there's all kinds of reasons to take this opportunity to clean up things. If you do it automatically, all those people will still have access to it, which is kind of defeating the purpose. But of all the reasons to do it manually, the biggest one is because Google says you should. You should do this manually. Uh, here is Google's documentation. This is in one of the links in the last slides of how to do the automated process. <laughs> okay, I, I, I find this hilarious. When I saw this, I just laughed out loud. Okay, so they like broke their branding guidelines, not only to give you a call out, but like even use a red letters and then a underline like, we strongly recommend you manually migrate your universal analytics to GA4. There you go. End of story. Like they don't even have confidence they're gonna be able to do it right. So just take the time and migrate your accounts manually and thank me later when Google doesn't mess it up. All right, let's see where else, where, where are we going? Here we are. So how do we do a manual install? First thing we have to do is app opt out of automatic migration. So I'm gonna, I, I have an account that I've kind of built a long time ago uh, and frankly don't care much about. So, you know, my cankerworms Charlotte website uh, is not very important to me. In fact, it's not very important to many other people as you can see by the traffic, but this does not have a GA4 account. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to opt out of this. We're gonna go in here 
we're going to go, we're within universal analytics, right? Um, and since we're looking at the property for universal analytics, we know that because it's got a UA dash blah, 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 dash one, right? We go here to GA4 setup assistant. We scroll down and it says automatically set up a basic Google Analytics for property. No, thank you. Success. We have opted out of Google's migration. Done. Now, that's kind of a pain in the butt to go through all of our clients, all of our properties and opt out of this, but uh, I think it's, it's worth the effort. The second thing we need to do after we opt out is we need to create a new property. So we can follow their wizard, but like I said, I have gotten, uh, I've lost confidence in Google's ability to do the wizard. So all I'm going to do is go back here and I'm going to create a property. Um, you'll know if you're a good user of analytics, we used to think in terms of views. Uh, the GA4 property does not have views anymore. It has more properties. So we're going to create a new property. This is the new GA4 for worms. All right. We just got to name it something. I'm going to change it to my local time. Uh, this actually mattered more in universal analytics than GA4 because uh, in universal analytics, it, when it hit midnight, the session would start over. So if you have the wrong time zone, you'd have a little bit of a screwy situation. But uh, that doesn't happen with GA4. But we're going to go ahead and change our time zone, at least so it's reporting time accurately. Uh, great. Next. We can answer these questions, or we can skip out. Uh, Google, you got enough information on me. Um, okay, so now we're getting to this little thing that uh, we've, we're, we were seeing a few weeks ago in every, every time we logged in, I don't know about you. We can migrate from universal analytics. This again is what we have opted out of. So this is the frustrating thing. Google's advice, is to not let this happen, but then Google keeps offering this to us. So we're just going to say no, and we're going to say, because you're stupid for our reason, and we're going to save. Okay, but we're not done creating a GA4 property. We need to start collecting data. So we need to create a platform. Now, for most of us, it's going to be a web platform. Uh, if you have an Android app or an iOS app, well, guess what? One of the advantages of GA4 is that we can have cross application tracking and we can track between apps and websites and we can even compare users. It's pretty amazing. They've actually integrated Firebase within GA4. But alas, charlottecankerworms.com does not have a web app. So we're going to do that. Um, all I have to do here is type in my website URL. Now, um, trick pro tip here, pull the canonical name of the URL. Um, when I say canonical, I mean, you know, after all the redirects, where does this end? Some of you have triple W, some of you don't. Some of you have HTTPS, some of you don't yet. You need your analytics to be set up to match whatever the final version. Now, because if we're in Chrome, I have a little block. So I know this is HTTPS, but I'm going to just prevent problems, copy, paste. Okay. So what, what I've learned is even though Chrome is not displaying the triple W, it is still built in. So that's important. I need to keep the canonical version. It's already got HTTPS. I don't know why I pointed at my screen. You can't see that. But now I know I have the canonical version of my homepage and I'm entering it there. Have to give my website a name. Now I do recommend enabling advanced member measurement. Again, this is one of the cool features of GA4 because it's gonna track not only page views, but scrolls. It's not gonna only track scrolls, but it's gonna track outbound clicks and a whole bunch of other stuff. 
automatically for you. Video engagement, tracked, blah, blah, blah. Really cool stuff that Universal, we used to have to do all kinds of fancy code stuff to do. GA4 does it for us. Create stream. Guess what? Now I have to install it. Now, this is a Blogspot blog. I don't use it very often. We're a WordPress community, so I'm not going to install this on here. Uh, but I do want uh, just you know how to set up the profile because I'm going to recommend you take the time before you add anything to your site to go ahead and create your GA4 property. Save yourself some trouble. Create your property even if you're not installed it yet. Um, but we've created this here. The best way if on WordPress to install this on your site, and I, I'll say this with the caveat that I'm not a fan of adding yet another plugin to, to do yet another thing, but Google here is recommending, and I will too, their site kit plugin. Um, the site kit plugin is available for free. It is a Google product and it allows you to add all kinds of things in a really easy way. Um, when you go to the WordPress, I have the link to uh, the actual plugin in the slides, but make sure you download the Google Site Kit plugin to do this. Follow this wizard, it does work, and add your Google Analytics uh, you can see it's even walking you through your tag ID. Remember, Universal starts to start with UA. Now it doesn't anymore. We have directions on here. You all know how to put a plugin in. You can read directions. You don't need me to waste your time doing that. So we won't. Um, but I will say, now that we have done this, we've added this tracking to the site. Uh, in our example, we haven't. So I'm going to switch back to my slides. Um, so we started, we opted out per property of the automatic migration. We created a GA4 property. Then if you're using WordPress, I recommend using the SiteKit plugin to add your code to every page of the website. But step four, this is me pleading with you, please, please set up conversion tracking. Now we could do a whole nother webinar on how to set up Google uh, tracking for conversions in GA4. Um, it's really pretty easy. Uh, one of the advantages of GA4 is that we don't have to add codes to pages anymore. <laughs> they built it so we can do it within GA4's interface. We don't have to uh, add event tracking JavaScript. We don't have to do all kinds of bugging things and breaking themes. Google Analytics 4 it makes this really easy. For instance, let's say we want to... Uh, Click, or sorry, uh, uh, consider the submission button on a form a conversion. In Universal Analytics, we have to set up JavaScript code to say, hey, we're going to, every time this button's clicked, we're going to send a special event into Universal. And I want you to consider that an event. And then I want Google Analytics to listen for that event. And when it happens, I want you to consider it a goal. Okay, but sometimes that event tracking was a pain. Uh, sometimes your your form plugin didn't even support it. Uh, then you'd have to do Tag Manager and then you have to do JavaScript. Ah, oh, what a mess. GA4, if you recall, listens for events. It is event-based system. So in other words, every time anything on the website is clicked, Google Analytics 4 knows it. So if we want to start tracking a form submission, we just have to tell Google Analytics, whenever this button is clicked, we want you not just to consider it another click. We want you to consider that click a conversion. It's already listening to it. We just have to tell Google Analytics which clicks to listen to 
and consider a conversion. That's really what it comes down to. But what I'm saying now is while you're doing this manual installation process, please take the time to add conversion tracking. This is the real value of Google Analytics. Hey, you know, it's really interesting to know how much traffic you got. It may even be fun to see where that traffic came from. But what good is that traffic if it doesn't help the website produce something of value? You're building these wonderful websites for your clients, or you're paying a developer to build a website for your business. You need to know that website's generating some sort of income for you. And when you track conversion tracking, whether that's e-commerce or lead generation or phone calls, if you know more phone calls were generated from your website than not, you know your website's making you money. If you're building a website for someone and you can say, 100 people contacted you last month. Of that, how many customers did you get? Now the website you built for them is not just a cost of doing business. It is now suddenly an income revenue generating device. And if you can take the time to add conversion tracking, you will prove really quickly how valuable your website is. Um, now, I will caveat this to say, if you are running Google ads, there are additional steps that you need to take. I'm not going to get into them today because we only have so much time, but there is more you need to do. Pay attention uh, to that. Now, pitfalls that we need to worry about when making this migration. Um, some of you have installed Google Analytics years ago or you installed it using some old plugin that you've not updated in 20 years, or maybe uh, you know you, your theme has automatically added your Google Analytics code to you, your site for you. Hey, that's great. But you really need to make sure uh, for this to work that your website is running analytics, excuse me, your website is running the gtag.js, Google Analytics function, not analytics.js. So uh, here's a difference. Let me share my screen again, and we will show you this. So this wonderful, uh, earth-shattering Charlotte Cankerworms website, if we view the source and we look for the universal analytics code, we see that it is running analytics.js. Now, if you've ever played with Blogger, you know there's a place where you can add this identification number in the interface and it will help you by automatically adding uh, Google Analytics to your website. Thank you, Blogger. You're a Google product, we're not surprised. However, because this is running the old analytics script, analytics.js, we can't use the auto migrate functions even if we wanted to, to convert into GA4. GA4 requires the gtag.js analytics package. So uh, it's worth checking on your code of your website of existing sites to make sure uh, you are not using analytics.js and using gtag.js. Now, if you are going to take my suggestion and install a complete new, new analytics code on your site, you're going to be fine, even if you had this old one, because this old one is going to stop working in a couple months and you just take it off. But if you try to do the automation because you think, whatever, it's just easier, and you're using the analytics.js, you're going to have some serious problems. You're going to have to add the gtag.js code anyway. So just go ahead and install the gtag.js on your site, and then you don't have to worry about analytics.js. Hey, David, real quick, could you zoom in on that code? It's really small for some folks. Okay, I will do my best. Oh, zoom, 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 zoom. Is that a little better? Perfect, thank you. Okay, there we go. Analytics.js is what Blogger is running. Make sure that you are not running analytics.js. Um, this UA code won't tell you because the G tag can run with the UA code, 
uh, just make sure you're not running analytics.js. Thank you, Nathan. Um, one other little pro tip that's a lot of fun to play with is uh, the real-time verification report in Google Analytics 4. Um, once you install your analytics code, especially your GA4 code, go to the real-time report. Uh, it's easy to find um, and watch to confirm that people are viewing your site. You know, sometimes I'll even go call a couple friends and say, hey, will you go visit the site for me real quick? Just to confirm that I can track and that it is working. Um, what we want to see is we want to see that it's not just tracking on the homepage. Common mistake is that people add it only to the homepage, the uh, Google Analytics code to the homepage. You want to make sure it's on every single page of your site. Um, but anyway, uh, use the real-time verification. You can even watch yourself view yourself through the site. But that's a really nice troubleshooting report to confirm that it's actually working. Um, another pitfall is privacy or cookie opt-ins. Um, different services that allow you to provide a, a cookie banner and say, hey, I'm gonna to consent to being trapped. Uh, if you are uh, working or living, or even if your visitors live or work in some particular locations, Virginia, Colorado, uh, Europe, California, Brazil, all kinds of places, uh, you, you have to give them a privacy opt-out option. I'm not going to talk about all the laws here, but, you know, there are different solutions you can use to uh, provide that cookie uh, opt-in. Warning, they work. So uh, understand that you potentially could be completely cutting off any ability for your website to measure traffic by doing this. I highly recommend whatever cookie solution privacy opt-in you use, make sure it only shows to the people who are required to see it. Um, every solution I've seen that is credible has the ability to only show the cookie disclaimer to geographies that have to see it. I live in Charlotte. Uh, North Carolina, I live in, I technically live in South Carolina, but anyway, in neither North or South Carolina, am I required to see a cookie opt-in? So when I visit my website, I don't see it. That means I can see the traffic from anybody in North and South Carolina. Now, if you're in Virginia and view my site, um, you should get the opt-in. And that's because the law requires it. And uh then I have to get your permission to track you. Now, there are other rules about this. It's not just that you live in Virginia. For instance, California, the rule is that I have to have so much traffic and so much income from my website from California to be required to show it to California. So even in that case, I don't have any clients in California. I really don't make any money from California. I come in under the threshold for California. So... Consult your attorney, but I don't know if I really have to comply with CP, CCPA. Point is, uh, only show the cookie banner when you have to show the cookie banner or you will have zero traffic, even though you converted yourself into GA4. And frankly, this is not a GA4 thing. You can pay all kinds of other third-party tracking services and they all have to comply with that. So just know that your cookie opt-in privacy policy will affect your traffic. Um, I will say that the transition to GA4 is a good opportunity to make this because the traffic's going to be different anyway. So as long as the traffic's any different, you might as well add this at that point because the numbers aren't going to line up. And at least now we are taking the hit in traffic at the same time. And it's not like, hey, last month we converted GA4 and now everything's totally different. And then three months later, we added a cookie policy. Now it's even down even further. Take the hit at once, only up from there. Um, I will say another pitfall is just make sure that your WordPress theme, uh, you don't have an additional plugin uh, or anything else is adding a your Google Analytics code also to your site. Um, 
I find it really funny. In fact, sometimes it's not funny when I've seen plugins try to add a Google Analytics code to my site. You want to take this opportunity to make sure you um, know what analytics codes are tracked on your site. Uh, maybe your old developer used an old Google Analytics install that you don't even have access to anymore. It's still on your site. They're still getting your data. Frankly, it's none of their business. Double check, view your source code, look for UA dash, look for analytics.js, gtag.js, just to account for all the code that might be on your website. Um, I will say there's a nice little browser plugin called Ghostery that I use. I use it primarily to make sure I don't inflate my client's numbers when I visit their site, but it does instantly tell me how many installs of Google Analytics are on the site so that I can instantly say, oh, wow, there are three different installs of analytics on this site. I better account for them so that I can make sure there's only one running. Also make sure that you don't have the same analytics code track uh, executing twice on your website. Sometimes you see that. Suddenly all your uh, traffic numbers are divisible by two because they're double tracking. Funny, but not funny at the same time. And finally, you know, Tag Manager, I highly recommend you install Tag Manager and use that on your website to, and use that to install your Google Analytics code on your site. Um, I will suggest, oh, sorry. There we go, new share, there we go. I, where did that go? All right, well, we're gonna go back to that. Um, Google Tag Manager is a great little tool. You can think of Tag Manager like a bucket that allows you to add and remove codes to the website because the Tag Manager code is on your website. So if you wanna start doing Facebook ads, put your Facebook code within your Tag Manager and now you don't have to monkey with your theme. Uh, even better when you're marketing, people don't have to monkey with your theme. Um, uh, you can add Tag Manager through SiteKit plugin. That's the high, I, the way I'd recommend you add Tag Manager to your site kit. Um, however, be really careful there. When you add Tag Manager, you want to add Google Analytics within your Tag Manager install, but then you got to remember to go back into your site kit install and tell site kit, don't serve Google Analytics through site kit because you're already serving it through Tag Manager. Um, for some reason, I'm not able to show you my Chrome but maybe we'll figure that out in a QA and a time. Point is, I recommend using Tag Manager. If you do it, use it with SiteKit, pay attention to make sure you don't run into any problems. Uh, here are some of the uh, little things we talked about today. I did a little YouTube video a couple of weeks ago, how to opt out of Google's automatic GA4 migration. If you missed this here today, um, I also am linking to a couple of uh, things on from Google on making the switch. The last uh, bulleted item here is the disclaimer of why you should do it manually, but some other valuable information. Um, I will say, hey, you know, I have been running for the last th two or three quarters a Google Analytics certification study group. I would invite you all to participate in that. Uh, Google Analytics. Google offers a certification for analytics, just like it offers a certification for Google ads. Uh, it's great certification. Uh, it's actually fairly hard to pass. Um, so people who have it really deserved it. It's a great way to learn what GA4 can do. It's a great way to demystify it. Uh, we're starting a new session of the study group on April 17th. I would love for you to join us. So just click the link, sign up. And I think the study group lasts five weeks and uh, we'll go through the certification together. Even if you don't earn the certification, I think you'll learn a lot more about Google Analytics. And anyway, uh, that is all we've got to cover today. Really great stuff today, David. Uh, and just to clarify, that study group is free, right? Yes, it is. Right, right when you took a drink. Yeah. Yes.
All right, folks, we have a lot of questions stacked up, 26 of them, uh, actually. Uh, yes, Stacy, it's really free. So uh, take advantage of David's generosity there. Uh, it is a, a quite a good group. Um, so if you have a question you haven't asked yet, pop open that Q&A and uh, ask that question. Also, open it up anyway and scroll through the questions that have been asked. And if you have that same question, hit the thumbs up icon, because in just a moment, we'll be taking votes, uh, taking questions in the order of votes that they have received. Uh, one thing I would like to clarify, David, uh, you talked about uh, the, the Google Site Kit plugin and uh, also the uh, using the Google Tag Manager. So which is the better option to uh, actually install the code? Yes. So I'm finally able to show you. So when you install SiteKit within your settings, you can connect services, right? By default, when you get started, you'll usually connect the service of Google Analytics and that'll install your Google Analytics code there. Great. I recommend if you're not too scared of this, go ahead and add the service of Tag Manager, okay? That will put the Tag Manager code on your website. You can then add your Google Analytics code in your Tag Manager install, but go back into your analytics and do not insert your Google Analytics code through SiteKit at that point because you've already added it in Tag Manager, turn it off here, okay? In this case, I have the Universal Analytics snippet on here because I did not add it in Tag Manager, but because I added the Google Analytics 4 in Tag Manager, it is not inserted through SiteKit. Just a little picadillo, um, but I do recommend going in and creating a tag manager and then adding it through SiteKit. Yeah, very good. And and we found just any anytime we've relied on a plugin to add the analytics code, there's always the chance that somehow that plugin loses connection with Google and it needs you to go in and authorize it again. And we've had sites, you know, it was a few weeks before we realized that and I mean, there's no analytics because there was no tracking code. Yeah. Okay. Several, several, many questions. Twenty-eight questions. Um, all right. So let me uh, just address a couple of things. There is a replay we'll have up. Let me drop those links in the chat. I realize that the links in the chat are not copyable. We've been around the world with Zoom on this. It's just not possible. You can click the link and copy the URL from the browser. That's our workaround. There's not another way to do that. That you know. And we've been on with Zoom support. I understand. It's a thing. We haven't been able to find the solution. So with that, let us get into the Q&A. First one from Melanie. Uh, David, would you say that Google Analytics 4 is making Tag Manager redundant? No. They're two different things. All right. There is talk of merging the tags, but uh, they are two different things. Yeah. Okay. Beth says, I have a new website where Google Analytics is not yet set up. Would it be beneficial... Uh, to set that up in GA4 from scratch before I do the migrations of other sites? Uh, I don't know if it's beneficial. You cannot add UA anymore to new sites. They've locked you out of that. So I highly recommend adding any Google Analytics as quickly as possible to a website. You might not think you need it now, but you'll thank yourself later. Um, I don't know if it'll help you, but do it as soon as possible. Yeah. And so it, it, I think Beth's question was really about uh, just so she could get to understand Google Analytics for more. But yeah, you don't have any other option now, Beth, because you can't add UA code, right? Uh, okay. Beth says another question. Remind, Beth says she, she reminded her client that they need to get their marketing agency to take care of the analytics issue. And they said they're trying, but nobody can remember the Google account and who owns the <laughs> analytics. Is there something they can do? Oh, how many times we've had this problem? Start over. The case of the lost analytics. Yeah, wouldn't it be great if there was a spot you could go and say, oh, it's this account that owns that UA code. Yeah, there. I, not that I've ever known. I've even, yeah, it's, sorry. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, Stacy said it belonged to the person who left six months ago. <laughs> you know, good luck. And that's probably true. Well, and that's why I said, take this opportunity to do an audit to see who, is controlling it. I, I think as a marketing professional, my duty is to give ownership of the account to the clients so that even they can lock me out of it. 
I know that some developers are really scared of approaching it that way because they know their clients monkey with things, but I, I, that is their asset. They own it. I'm managing it for them. They should always have ownership and they should know who has ownership. Um, yeah, they're going to screw it up. Sometimes you just got to start over. It's like a domain name, right? Like the right. client should own the domain name. Yes, mm. absolutely. Uh, Monica's question, if we already have installed Google Analytics 4, is Google going to override our setup? How do we know we've done it correctly? I'd almost rather have Google do it. Okay, so let us go to what Google says about this. Um. Where was it? Okay. I, I still think you should opt out even if you already created one. Um, I, I'm so frustrated and confused with Google and their, what they're telling me. I went and created a Google Analytics 4 property for every one of my clients last March. So they've been running for over a year at this point. Sometimes I connected them. Sometimes I disconnected them. But no matter what, Google is still telling me they don't even know that they have a GA4 property. And it, I, get, I get really worried when it's right there and they don't even know. So you might be fine. You might be fine to just let it happen. Um, but I tell you, I've seen Google really push this very, very hard, very, very fast. They've made a lot of mistakes. And because I, as a marketer, live and breathe by analytics to show the value of what I'm doing for my clients, I really can't afford for Google to screw up my data. And so in that way, I am just not going to let them accidentally break something. And so I don't have any confidence, opt out is the best professional recommendation I can give you. Um, if you, you want to try to opt in and see what happens, uh, it might work, it might be fine. I might be paranoid. Um, and then you can say, I told you, David, you're crazy. I don't have to, you know, whatever, but I really recommend you just go ahead and opt out. Yeah. All right, next question from Monica. Can we make the switch just from within the Google Site Kit plugin? Does it, does it create the property and install the code automatically? So if you, if, yes, I should say that. Yes, uh, if you use Site Kit plugin, it will um, create an install of GA4. It might hiccup if the current analytics.js is on your site because, but the wizard in site kit will tell you that, but still double check your code. Like make sure your theme isn't adding it to. Make sure you, if you're using monster insights or something like that, that it's not also adding it. Make sure your developer didn't hard code it in there. You know, follow the wizard in site kit and add it that way. It will tell you um, what's going on that's you, you can you can just simply add it by doing the site kit plugin yeah yeah good uh sue asks if you have a basic brochure site where the only real event is filling out a contact form for example will ga4 report there's not enough data for a report forever so apparently that's what's happening to sue she's not getting enough data so ga will always report always it's hard to say if you're getting no data, you've got no visitors in Google Analytics. It's not like Search Console where at a certain threshold, they're gonna not show you certain pieces of information. Uh, Google Analytics, so if that site has zero visits in analytics, the first thing I'd check is to make sure the analytics code's really installed. Like let's do Occam's razor here and make sure that the simplest solution is there really is an install of Google Analytics on the site. That's where the ghost tree plugin can help, or you can just open up the code of the page as rendered and look for UA dash analytics.js, gtag.js. Look and make sure the code's on the site. If the code is on the site and you're still getting zero, 
you just get no traffic to that website at all. And sorry, you know, that's just the truth. Yeah. Great. Uh, let's see. I'm going to skip down to Tara's question because there's a, I think there's a misconception here uh, from one of your slides that we should probably clarify yes. uh, on it's, it's slide seven, David, where it talks about pitfalls. And the first bullet is analytics.js, not gtag.js. And I think what you meant by that is that having analytics.js is the pitfall versus you want gtag.js on your site, right? Yes. Uh, you, the analytics JS, not GTAG, that's not the recommendation. That's the pitfall, right? Right. Thank you. That is very confusing. So you do not want analytics.js. You need to have gtag.js. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I double negated myself out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Here's a great question, Dion. Uh, what if it's what if the site has already been transitioned automatically by Google? Can it be undone? What, what would you recommend if it's been automatically transitioned? Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. If you didn't opt out in time, you can still disconnect your properties. That would not allow the connection for Google to do this. Um, or you can just hope for the best. Yeah. Is the, is the link to that Google Answers doc in the handout? Yes, it is in the third to last slide, the last bullet. Got it. Great. Okay, I'm going to drop that link in the chat, folks, for if you, if you happen to miss that. Okay, next question is from Monica. What's the best way to figure out how to set up someone new, uh, some new reports in Google Analytics 4 to see some of the items we're used to seeing in Universal Analytics. That seems to be the most confusing thing right now, like right. getting those reports to sync up. So the, the data is not going to sync up because we're measuring apples and oranges. So this is a time when we educate our clients to understand that, number one, apples and oranges. Number two, apples are better than oranges, right? We got better data. We got more clarity. And, and so it's actually an improvement. Sometimes clients don't want to hear that. Sometimes clients are like, oh my gosh, where are my page views? Okay, sorry, someone's moved your cheese. You know, we can complain about this all we want. Uh, I, it's hard to answer that in a broad statement without knowing the specifics you're looking for. Uh, I would look into Looker Studio as a way to be able to easily create automated reports. Looker Studio is a great little tool. If you're a designer, your reports will look prettier than mine. Uh, mine are pretty boring. Um, but Looker Studio is a great way to connect your data into Looker Studio and display it in a way that makes sense to you based on the data that you'd like to show. Formerly called Google Data Studio. Uh, and I still refuse to call it Looker. I'm gonna call it Google Data Studio until forever. I just hey. hate that. I hate that name. Hey, you know, whatever. I still call <laughs> it AdWords. So, so it's interesting though, with this different managing management or, or measurement criteria, um, it's like, you know, if you're a geezer like me and you've been around the web for a while, we used to call it, how many hits did you get on your website? Right. 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 And a hit like loading the page was a hit and every single image was a hit. So you could triple your hits by adding more images. Right. Right. But it's, it's just a different measurement criteria. So we've kind of evolved into the next age of the web as it were. Right. <laughs> like Chris says, please sign my guest book. <laughs> <laughs> I That's used awesome. to have one of them. I did too. Thank you, Chris, for that. Okay. Next question is from Catherine. Uh, if you use <laughs> If you use Google Tag Manager or do the base tag for GA4, does it still have that advanced measurement and built-in event tracking? Could you read that again? Yeah. Okay. So if you use Google Tag Manager and you're doing the GA4 tag, does it have an advanced measurement and built-in events tracking? Is that part of GA4 that you just talked about? GA4 has events tracking whether you use Tag Manager or not. Right. Yeah, so Tag it's not manager is an easy way to add and subtract codes to a website without monkeying with website code. Tag manager is a bucket to allow you. So let's say I want to do LinkedIn ads. I put the LinkedIn code. I run it 
And then I say, okay, I don't want to do LinkedIn ads anymore. It's too expensive because they are. And I take the code off. I don't have to mess with my theme. I just adding and subtracting code. So it's just a way to add codes to a website. It doesn't offer you advantages or not when you're using JA4. Yeah, very good. All right, folks, we're going to take, uh, we're getting, we're starting to run over time here. We're going to take about three minutes. David, do you have like maybe three or four more minutes here? Yeah, yeah I got to prepare for another client call. So I've met, but yes. Okay, so we'll do two more questions. And folks, uh, look at the list of questions. The one you want to see answered after the one that's currently at the top of the list, make sure you click a thumbs up because that's the next question. Uh, this is a good question here from Nath. What happens to the old data after the GA4 cutoff date? GA4 will stop recording data in July 1. You will have access to that data to December some date. After December, Google will not promise you access to that data anymore. So bye-bye. Yeah, it's gone. Theoretically, right? Now, Google has also been known to push off these dates further in the right. future, but there are many, there are million dollar lawsuits on the line. And that's, that's what's prompting all this transition to, to, U, uh, to GA4, right? So having that potentially you know, that, that set of data that has personally identifiable information is a legal liability for Google. So they may not extend this deadline. Who knows? Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Last question is, uh, okay, we just got, we just got another upvote. We'll do this one from Richard. Do you have a cookie opt-in plugin recommendation? Um, my cookie opt-in plug-in plug recommendation is Ayubenda. Um, I like, I've used them for years. They are run by a group out of Italy. So they're intimately aware of GDPR, but they do a great job out of the box without extra configuration, only showing your code to the users who need to see it, which again is my primary concern. Um, if you're not in Virginia or California or Europe, I can track you and I, I need to track you. Um, and so that's the primary concern. It works really well. Uh, it's a little more complicated to set up, but it actually um, will actually watch your website to, oh, you added a new tag. You didn't disclose it and tell you. Um, things like that that are advantageous. So it's called Ayubenda. Um, that's what I'd recommend. Yep. And that spelling and link is there in the webinar chat. Uh, David, this has been awesome. Thanks so much for uh, your wisdom and the presentation, as well as great answers to many, many questions. And there's still, by the way, 23 open questions. So we could have gone <laughs> on for another hour, at least for this. Tweet uh, me at uh, the SEO game plan and I'll see what I can do. Yeah, there you go. So at the SEO game plan, uh, and that's in the slides as well. Uh, so folks, if you came in late or if you want to catch the replay, we'll have the video up in about an hour at the link that I'm going to drop in the chat one more time. Uh, the link to download the slides is there as well. And uh, we'll have all that up, the transcript, all the chat. Well, there's a, a lot of good links in the chat. So all that will be um, there for you on the replay page. Uh, Nick is saying, I wish this had occurred more often. David, we'd love to have you back. We love uh, your, your instructional style and uh, how much you know about all these things. Really appreciate you uh, today. You want to wrap this all up for us? Give us, give us uh, your final thoughts. Yeah, thank you all for, for viewing. Uh, I hope you'll learn to love GA4. It is a better product. Join us for the study group. If you are still struggling with it, uh, not only will you learn more about GA4, but you'll, I think you'll have a good time because we always have a good time there. So I hope yeah. to see you there. Definitely. So take David up on that free uh, study group for Curious Ants. It is very good. Chris from my agency went through it and uh, passed the test. Yeah, Chris did a great job with that. Uh, we do these sorts of free webinars all the time here on iThemes Training. Uh, you can visit us at training.ithemes.com. The link there is in the chat. Uh, we have, for example, a WordPress news roundup coming up one week from today. That's open for everybody. Basically a 30-day summary of everything that's happened in the WordPress world, especially angled at people who build and manage WordPress sites for clients. So we do that every month and a plug-in roundup and lots of other things. So take advantage of those free webinars. If you're a member, we're back tomorrow for the Fly Business Transformation course. I'll be talking about pricing your work and, of course, office hours with me for members on Thursday. That's going to wrap it up for us today. Thank you all for hanging out with us. David, thanks again for your, uh, your really great insight into this. 
Thank you all as well, all the attendees for great questions. That's going to do it today. I'm back here tomorrow uh, for members with the Business Transformation course here on iThemes Training, where we go further together.